In a world where many people see reality as a circle or a rectangle, the truth is that issues are cylinders. Rather than a two-dimensional understanding, we will flush out the three-dimension complexities through nuanced conversation and civil, respectable discourse to highlight all perspectives on controversial issues. I'm your host, William Roosh, a high school teacher who's trying to transform education as we know it. Welcome to the Anti-Echo Chamber. This is Cylinder Radio. Hello and welcome to the pilot episode of Cylinder Radio. Cylinder Radio, I am the guy who's going to be running this whole thing, Mr. Roosh. Uh, William Roosh is my name. And welcome. So a little bit about what this podcast is going to be. So this is just an introduction podcast, and then we're going to get right into it in the next episode. So an introduction to uh, about myself I am a, I've been teaching high school for 13 years in Los Angeles and two years prior to that in Pennsylvania doing student teaching and things. And I have taught every kind of high school student you can imagine. I have taught kids sleeping in cars and I've taught billionaires kids. I have taught uh, child A-list actors and little you know geniuses and I've taught kids with severe autism and I've taught uh, kids who are deep into the gang life. And in all of these teaching experiences, I have learned to understand different perspectives uh, of where kids are coming from. And I've really, I put in my Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hours, more than that, in the classroom, uh, explaining things to, to young people. So uh, that's my career. In my personal life, I was raised in uh, in Pennsylvania. I was in, in Eastern Pennsylvania, and I was raised in a very upper middle class, you know, all American, hot dogs and hamburgers, white picket fence kind of life. Uh, beautiful little house and uh, loving family, and it was a very you know very typical ideal American life. We even had a collie, like the the dog that, uh, that Lassie was like, it was, it was like the perfect looking thing. And then I moved out to Los Angeles. Uh, I just kind of wanted to try something new. I don't know exactly why, but uh, clearly I was looking for something different and new and go on some sort of adventure, even though that wasn't my personality at the time. And I came out here and then I met my wife and married into her family, which was very different. She is an immigrant. She came here from the Philippines when she was like eight years old. And I got to to see her family and her family lives close by and we're very close. And her family brought me in and showed me a lot of love. And it was very different. And it showed me the differences in cultures where culture is so much more than just language and food or you know skin color or things like that like that was that was an eye opening experience for me that culture ran deep and it it included like your sets of morals or how you choose a career or how you parent or or the way you view money like it is deep the and that those cultural differences really shook me and it was it was uh it was something that my wife and I had to figure out cuz we were coming from just two different worlds and we had to, to, to find like, what is, what is right? Because your family said, this is the way you should do it. And then my family said, this is the way you should do it. And we had to reconcile like, well, what is it? So I was teaching different areas, kind of seeing like, oh, what is it? You know, what are, what is it like to be a teenager in America? And I was getting all these different things because at a, at a private school, the pressure that is on these young kids, the anxiety about how they have to get great grades and they have to go to these in, you know, special colleges and, and perform was an intense anxiety and kids are having panic attacks in 10th grade and stuff like that. But then when I was teaching in, you know, the low income areas, they had to deal with, you know, getting robbed on the way to school of their shoes and they had to worry about, you know, gang violence and things like that. So I'm starting to get these perspectives, right? These different angles on like one topic. And then I started listening on my commute to podcasts as opposed to, you know, sports radio or 
uh, music or anything like that. And one of the podcasts I, I started listening to was Joe Rogan's podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience. And I started listening to it because uh, of martial arts and he's a martial artist and does the UFC commentary and things like that. And I have a history of martial arts throughout my life. I did Tang Soo Do, like traditional Korean karate type stuff when I was a kid. And then I, uh, I got into jujitsu and boxing and uh, Muay Thai kickboxing and things like that later in life. And so I was like, oh, I'll listen to this martial arts guy. And, you know, it's Joe Rogan. So I kind of figured he was like a meathead. And it turned out to be a little bit more complicated than I thought. And uh, and I heard someone say one time that uh, that Joe Rogan is like Oprah for men. And I think that's probably pretty accurate. So I was listening to Joe Rogan and he started having people on that were part of this. Eventually it would become the intellectual dark web uh, based on a, a name given by Eric Weinstein, and there was a New York Times article about it. And it's essentially this group of of thinkers who have come together. They're very diverse in who they are and, and what their views on things are. But what they have in common is this search for truth. So a couple of the people who are in this, this intellectual dark web, as they call it, would be Joe Rogan, who is... You know, kind of like a like a sophisticated ape. Like he he breaks things down in such a simple caveman way. I love it. It's the way I actually teach my classes. Is just you know break it down as simply as possible uh, to the to get to the big ideas. And he does that. He's also very open minded. Uh, he's well thought out and he's very intentional in what he does. So he's into hunting and archery and martial arts and even like he has muscle cars and he's like very specific about what he's into and why and he's very well thought out. Uh, another person who uh, holds a medium for these, these thinkers that have influenced me is Dave Rubin. Dave Rubin has lived on both sides. He lived a very like left-leaning liberal lifestyle and, and voted that way and thought that way and then was exposed to certain things that got him to question his, his, the way he was thinking. And he kind of went to the other side and he understands both sides. So this is Cylinder Radio and he was living as a circle for a while and then saw the rectangle. And now he's like, you know, uh, he calls himself a classical liberal, but it's, he sees kind of all sides and he opens up this platform to have people on who can talk about these different things. Uh, Jonathan Haidt, the, the college professor at the Stern Business School at NYU, he has collected just mass amounts of, of, of data to support the idea that the left, political spectrum left and political spectrum right need each other. The left wing and the right wing need each other. The, his books, The Righteous Mind and The Coddling of the American Mind are excellent and they really helped shape my thinking uh, that led me to this podcast. Uh, Jordan Peterson, uh, it was uh, a clinical and research psychologist at University of Toronto and at Harvard, and he's become this controversial figure. And now he's like touring the country like a rock star. Uh, he uh, he is he did his homework when he wrote his first book, Maps of Meaning. He talks about how he it took him 15 years and like 10 hours a day. He put in like 40,000 hours into writing that book. He is well researched and he knows the extremes he talks about he you know what was the what's the worst of humanity so that's like nazism and the soviet union gulags and all that kind of stuff just mass murders and then how and then he kind of like reverse engineers it back to what can we do to prevent that so he has a deep understanding of humanity as a clinician he talked to people you know as a therapist like you know really got into their lives and so he has influenced me a lot. And then the other people in this group of people who don't like groups is Brett and Eric Weinstein, who is an evolutionary biologist and uh, a mathematician, uh, just very just rational people. Heather Hying, who is also an evolutionary biologist. Sam Harris, who's a, neuro, a neurologist. Uh, Steven Pinker, who wrote all kinds of work on where we are today so I'm, I'm recording this in 2018 and how humanity is just advancing and that's an important thing of like why did we advance how have we gotten here things like that uh ayan hersi ali 
who is talk, talks about the importance of free speech. Sam, um, uh, ben Shapiro, who you know is a little bit more inflammatory, uh, but he you know is very data driven and also a very bright guy. Uh, there are all these these people that are very very different. They're different in you know what they there's an atheist and an orthodox Jewish person. There's you know there's a a black woman and white men. There's 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 you know there's men and women and there's gay people. It's all these different people. There's people who voted for Bernie Sanders, people who voted for for Hillary Clinton, people who, vote, who voted for or would vote for Donald Trump, people who you know people who said anybody but Trump. Like it's all of these people who are so different. Well, then what's the group? The group that I, what I feel the group is, is their search for truth, that they're willing to look for truth and call out bad ideas, regardless of whether or not it lines up with, with what they think. They're, they're open to new ideas. So I started listening to all of these people and reading their books and things like that. And I've been very fortunate to meet with some of them. I was able to, uh, have Zoom calls with Brett Weinstein and talk about education. I was able to sit and talk with Ben Shapiro and talk about education. I got to go meet with Jordan Peterson and talk about education. And they all agreed that education is is uh, is failing in a lot of ways. Uh, the universities are not diverse in in their thinking. Uh, I know a lot of high school teachers, obviously, because I'm in the the, the profession and. These ideas, like true, honest, civil discourse and, and the search for truth and challenging ideas and, and risking, you know, uh, uh, you know, taking risks in your speech and stuff like that is not being done in high school. It's, it's all just like one path, the way that, that things are being done. And so I wanted to start this podcast as a way to, to do something different. I started an Instagram to try and grow a little bit of a, of a following beyond my, my classroom. So I started that about six months ago and that's steadily growing and I'm posting things on that. Uh, and the, the idea here is cylinder radio is from one angle. If you look at the cylinder, you see a circle. And if you don't move to another side, and see that it's also a rectangle. It's also an oval. Like the way, way you shine those, those flashlights, it's going to look differently because the item in the middle is complicated. It's not a two-dimensional figure. It's, it's, it's a three-dimensional figure. So I want to solve problems. I'm getting into teaching. Most people fresh out of college, education majors, it's like, why do you want to be a teacher? And it's something, you know, cliche and corny like, I want to, I want to help the world, you know, like something like that. So why not aim high? So I'm aiming pretty high and saying, you know, I want to solve the biggest problems that exist in humanity. And in order to solve problems, you need to understand problems. And the most complicated uh, uh, problems are going to have very complicated solutions. They're going to be hard to understand because if they're, if they're persistent problems, no one's been able to solve them yet. So in order to be able to solve them, we first have to really understand the problems. And that's only going to come from experiencing, talking, learning together. So uh, this podcast is going to be political. It's going to be psychological. It's going to bring in parts of social science and other sciences. I'm going to collect stories. Uh, It's going to collect data. I think that there's there's a. a vacuum for something like this. That's why I'm doing this. You know, I watch uh, I watch Shark Tank at times, and and there's a lot of people who invent something because they're like, I wanted to buy, you know, this widget, and the widget didn't exist, so I made it. So I think that I think there's something to that, and I I want I want education to be this way, and it's not, so I'm gonna do it. So that's why I'm doing this podcast is because no one else seems to be doing it. I've talked to a lot of people in education and they don't seem to be doing this or very rarely. So um, this is kind of my uh, my my bat signal out there to other educators who are interested in this kind of stuff that, you know, I I'd love to, to get you in on this on this whole process with me. So. Uh, the the podcast is going to be the format of myself and a guest and we will have a topic 
on the table and the topic will be the, the cylinder and it could be any number of controversial topics. And then the process of the show is going to be my guest and I discussing it. It's going to be us looking at all angles. I'm going to challenge my guests. I hope they challenge me. We're going to risk like we're going to risk hurting each other's feelings. Perhaps we're going to risk uh, 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 knocking down good ideas just to try and make them better. But the whole point of this is a search for truth. So we can really understand issues so we can flush out and really understand the problems within those issues so we can truly find solutions. And this isn't going to be something where it's, it's not just a blame game. This is, this is a search for truth and I'm going to hold myself to a high standard of being respectful and keeping with civil discourse and uh, I'm going to hold my guests to the same standard and this is not a place where you're going to see a lot of... Uh, a lot of taking cheap shots and jabs, you know, no one's going to get owned on here. So if you're looking to for, for like political talk, where like, you know, you know, libtard snowflake gets owned or, you know, Trumpy fascist gets owned. This is not going to be it. OK, this is this is going to be the opposite of that. This is the anti that. OK, so uh, that's what the podcast is going to be. Uh, I would love for you to give it a shot. I would also love to get feedback because it's going to be two people, maybe, you know, two or three or four at times. Generally, it's going to be myself and a guest. And we're not going to, we're, that's two flashlights. We not, might not see the whole cylinder with just two flashlights. So if we miss something, please send an email, cylinderradio at gmail.com and tell us. I, I want constructive criticism. You miss this, you know. You miss this. Tell me about this. You know, you miss this this part of it. Uh, this was really important and you skipped it completely over that or you didn't address it, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, let me know that. Okay, also, if you have new topics, there's a topic that you want to get the whole side to or, or you only see one side. You're like, I can't imagine how, you know, 50 million people support X. Can you explain that to me? Yes, yes, I can. That's what I'm going to try and do. So new topics or... Uh, constructive criticism or anything like that, uh, please email me at cylinderradio at gmail.com. So the plan is to get a podcast out every week or so, and uh, we're going to get going. So this was the pilot episode just to give a little bit of background about why I'm doing it. And I will try to make it entertaining and informative. And I'm going to try and and uh, kind of update education. Education is going to look differently, right? It looks very similar to the way it did 100 years ago. So, so let's, let's update it and let's, let's make it better. And that's the plan. So I look forward to having you in my audience. And uh, if you like it, if you get something from it, please go to iTunes and review it. Uh, a positive review would be, would be best. Uh, and, uh, and maybe we can grow this thing into something that, that will have an impact. And we can... We can literally make the world a better place so what's 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 better than that right so thank you very much for listening and uh be back soon with some great guests all right take care this has been cylinder radio the success of this podcast and the educational revolution that i hope you will be a part of is dependent on those who find value in it please take a few moments to review us on itunes so the show is more easily found if there was a perspective on today's topic that was not highlighted in this episode, or you have an idea for an episode topic that you want to understand more deeply, please email us at cylinderradio at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram at Will Roosh, W-I-L-L-R-E-U-S-C-H. Thank you for your support, and I look forward to the next one.